The basic thing is that whenever you move around, you see different type of vegetation like trees, bushes, grasses, birds and there are certain kind of bioforms that are available throughout the country. So India is one of the, this is very important, India is one of the 12 mega biodiversity countries of the world. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity or biodiversity means the biology is diverse. That means we have different kinds of plants, we have different kinds of animals and because of the diversity of the animals, say if in some place you get only deer, that may not be diverse, but you get along with deer, you get ox, you get uh, serpents, you get uh, lions and same goes with the plants. That means biodiversity. So biodiversity in case of that biodiversity or we take the countries, 12 countries are there in the world and India is one of them. So India occupies 10th place, 10th place in the world with about 47, how many plant species we have? 47,000 plant species, different, different type of plants we have. And if you come to Asia, that is our continent, uh, the continent in which we reside, we have fourth place. We are in the fourth place in terms of plant diversity, different types of, types of plants we have. There are 15,000 flowering plants. This is constitute how much? If you take all the plants, flowering plants of the world, we constitute 6% of that total amount. That is 15,000. India has approximately 90,000, 90,000 species of different animals. See how rich we are. Also, we have different type of fish, whether it be freshwater fish or marine water fish. A plant community, there is certain thing which we need to understand. What is, what is, uh, what is we mean by vegetation? What is we mean by natural vegetation? What is we mean by the artificial vegetation. So since we are talking about vegetation, all the content, whether it may be bush, whether it may be small plants, whether it may be trees, you combine them all and they are called as vegetation. In a place, in a certain region, in a certain region, that is a plant community which has grown naturally without human aid is called natural vegetation. There is a region and the things which are coming like the trees, like the big trees, like the small plants, like the, like the bushes. It can be anything which has the, uh, you can say plant, it comes from the plant community. Then we call it as a natural vegetation. Now you take a place on your back backyard, you grow something. This is not natural vegetation. This is artificial vegetation. I hope you got the idea between natural and, and artificial vegetation. Natural vegetation that has been left undisturbed by humans for a long time. That means the, veg the vegetation which is virgin that has not been touched yet. Virgin means it's not been touched yet, yet. So the natural vegetation that is those this area is growing number of vegetation and that has been left undisturbed. There is, there is no, no human intervention as of now. No human has interfered for a long time. And this is called virgin vegetation. What is this called? Virgin vegetation. So flora and fauna, flora and fauna are these two terms that will come, uh, you know, number of times. So flora, this is used to denote the plants. See flora, F-L-O, you can just uh, remember by the word flower. So plants of a particular region. So if I take a particular region, say this region, right? This region, say I'm taking Rajasthan region. Now the flora, that means all the plants of this region is called flora. And all the animals species, it's fauna. From A, you can take F-A, 
U and A. From A, you can take animal. You can remember like this. So all the animals of this, this region is the fauna. This different type of flora and fauna of a region, it constitutes to the biodiversity. The biodiversity of this region or you can take a period also or time also. So this is what the different types of flora and fauna, that is different type of plants and different type of animals, they constitute biodiversity. What is the important factors? Because if we talk about biodiversity, how these diversity arises in terms of plants and animal. So there are three factors which we have to understand. First is the relief, that is the height. See, this, this has a different relief and this has a different relief. So this, this has a quite uh, steepness. It has not, uh, not that much of steepness. So relief is actually the steepness of a height. Climate is the, uh, we have already learned about this. So climate means the uh, weather condition for more than 30 years. And ecosystem, ecosystem means the system that is a tantra, paristhitiki tantra. The ecosystem means there is an ecology or there is a communication, there is an interdependence between the flora and fauna and others like human. They form an ecosystem. So these are uh, the three factors of biodiversity. So let us start with the relief. What is this relief? Let me just take you there and then we'll discuss. See, relief has two things. First is the land. Second is the soil. What is the land? How is the land? Land may be say fertile land. Land may be rough land. Land may be undulated land. Land may be woodlands. Means just a grasslands. Right? So, every different land provides shelter for different kind of wildlife and different kind of bushes or trees or plants. See, if I say you that this is a, a grassland. So, we have ghas or grass. So, who are going to eat this? There will be a different type of wildlife. Right? And on this, the graph, grass is there. So, this grass is a different kind of flora we can say but if you go to some other place say you come to kerala now kerala has a wide you know biodiversity because the plants are quite dense the trees are quite dense so you'll get a different kind of animals and different kind of plants also so the land is very important when it comes to soil see everything grows on soil so we can have different kind of soil say desert if you uh, if the soil is of desert type, that is, if there is balu, reth, what is going to come from them? Cactus is going to come from desert. There will be thorny bushes. If you go to some place where it is quite, quite uh, wet, then marshy, deltoic soils, they support mangroves. So mangroves are those plants which uh, grow generally in the water and land area, means combined or you can say junction of that area. This hill slopes, if you have hill slopes, see, if you have a hill slope, then you, the soil is too much, means the depth of the soil is quite high. So you get a canonical trees. Canonical trees are like this, like your Christmas tree. This is your canonical trees. So it depends on what kind of soil it is that will support, because if you, if you talk about this area, that is Rajasthan Thar Desert, so it is just Balu, the desert area. So you get uh, cactus and thorny bushes and the most important thing here is see if your tree is in a wetland or a lot of rain is there so the patta or leaf will be larger size because the water is good and even if the water goes it doesn't matter because water is coming but if you go to this Rajasthan area there will be thorn there will be kante there will be thorn because you cannot uh, this Plants cannot let their water to go to go out. That means they don't want their water to evaporate. So they cannot they cannot have this kind of uh, you can say big big uh, leaves. So they ought to have these thorns. Cactus is one of them. Now coming to uh, the second one we discuss. See the biodiversity is first is uh, these are the factors. First is relief. Then we come to the climate. Again the temperature the sunlight, the precipitation, this also affects the biodiversity. So if you go to a place, 
where the temperature is quite uh, extreme, what will you get? You will not get, uh, say, if you go to the Himalayan range, the top one. It's always snow there. What kind of tree do you expect? No tree, small grasses or nothing. But if you come to these places, these western ghats, these places where a lot of rain is there and the temperature is quite good or you can say uh, side temperate. So you get different kind of tree. So humidity in the air, precipitation, soil, all the character and extent of vegetation are determined by temperature. Temperature, if there is high temperature, you will get cactus. If you have low temperature or moderate temperature, you will get some other kind of plant. When it comes to sunlight, see, we are from 8 degree to 37 degree. There are different latitudes. We are from uh, 68 to 97 degree uh, longitude. So, this is a very high, you can say 30 degree, 30 degree uh, to the both uh, the vertical and horizontal uh, spread we have. So, the sunlight is different. Some, some places get a lot of sunlight, this central, central region. But here sunlight is quite less. So, the sunlight, because the plant, they grow because of sunlight, because sunlight is there, chlorophyll is there, they take nutrients from the soil, right? So, the sunlight, the differences in the latitude, altitude, season, duration of the day, that is the duration of day in uh, the cold area, it's quite small. So, the sunlight is less. But in other places where sunlight is quite high, you will get different kind of plants and of course animals. Now precipitation, this word is very important. Precipitation is the term, it is not rain. Precipitation is given, is a word which is given to the content of the wind or air. That can be water, that can be snow, that can be uh, tushar, 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 uh, the uh, you can say uh, the you know, in the night time, in between water and snow, there is one more thing they, that is called tushar. So, that precipitation, all these combined are called as precipitation. So, we generally uh, say it to be rain because most of the precipitation, it gives rise to rain only. So, where the areas where we have heavy rainfall, when the rainfall is good, what you will get? There will be more plants. So, there will be dense vegetation. But if the areas are having less rainfall, then what do you get? Less trees, less plants. So almost you see this area and this area they are getting lot of rain, over 200 centimeter rain. You will get lot of trees, different species of trees and animals. But here there is less, there is less uh, water precipitation. Here also Ladakh region, you will get very less and uh, uh, this uh, flora and fauna. Here, Andaman Nicobar, Lord, you know, it's it's always rains there. So, you will get all greenery and different kinds of animals there. So, precipitation is also important. And precipitation mainly we define by, in, in our terms, Indian terms, the coming monsoon and go, going monsoon. That is, the advancing monsoon and the retreating monsoon. Then, what is ecosystem? Ecosystem, let me formally define now the ecosystem. Ecosystem, all the plants and animals in an area, they are interdependent. Means, if you have a plant, there is, there is a food chain. See, there is a food chain. So, if a plant is there or a tree is there, then some herbivore animal is going to eat it. Some carnivore element is going to, animal is going to eat uh, this herbivore animal. So, they are all interdependent. Even when they die, these animals die, they will give manure to the to the soil and again the plant can grow so there is a kind of interrelated or interdependency between these plants and animal right and this is the along with the environment with the flora and fauna so they form a proper system there is a proper arrangement that god has given us mother earth has given us and this is known as ecosystem a very large ecosystem on a land if it has distinct different type of vegetation and animal life, this is known as biome. What is this called? Biome. So, what are the uh, importance of forests? Why do we need forest? Why are we not thinking about forest? Forest gives us everything. These are renewable sources. That means, forest, you don't worry about them. They will grow themselves. They will uh, die themselves and they will 
again regrow. So they are renewable resources. And all the quality of environment, the good quality of environment or the bad quality of environment, you know, this is created by forest also. So actually it creates always a good impact or enhancement in the quality of environment. The forest, they are responsible for modifying the local climate because the leaves uh, on and the forest area, they give a lot of uh, evaporation. So it modifies the local climate. And if you have a lot of trees, water is coming, water is coming. The, the trees have roots that grab the soil. So water is not going to take it. So it controls the soil erosion also. If we have trees here, say trees here, trees here, the water will flow like this. It cannot go this side, this side. So it regulates the stream flow also. And it provides a lot of lot many raw material for the industries. And also for various communities, especially who are related or de dependent on the forest, they, the forest is giving them livelihood. Food to eat, animals to eat. They are different kind of uh, possibilities that these communities they render it and also you and me we go to Shimla we go to Manali we go to Northeast we go to Kashmir for what for panoramic for scenic view for beauty for uh, you can say recreation it controls the wind force trees they, they control the wind force the temperature and causes rainfall as I just said Evaporation, because of evaporation and because of the more content of the dense forest or some kind of other kind of forest, it the wind force and temperature also depends on the forest. And we, it provides humus to the soil. When the plant or animal die, the humus, the soil is getting humus from what? From these dying elements, uh, the dying uh, species. And all the wildlife which we talk about, they don't have houses like us. So they have house. What are their houses? Wildlife, they have houses as forests. So natural vegetation in India has undergone many changes. Why? Because there is a growing demand of growing population to grow different kind of crops. So cultivation of land. We want uh, enhancement, advancement. So we want a lot of industries. So development of industries. Mining also. We just want to live in the buildings now, concrete jungles. So we want urbanization. So we need to cut all the trees and pastures. We now want to grow or, you know, those animals we want to render or we want to use those who can give us meat. Especially uh, they use pastures. That's, that is how we are doing everything against the nature. I hope you got the idea. So I have to give uh, this uh, temperature, uh, temperature characteristics of the vegetation zone. So we have when the temperature is uh, about 24 degree, we have tropical vegetation zone. And the mean temperature in January is around 18 degree and there is no frost. So we, I was talking about something. There is a thing, uh, precipitation in between water and snow that is called frost. Okay. Subtropical. 17 to 24 degree for frost is rare temperate zone 7 degree to 17 degree and frost uh, frost sometimes snow alpine snows always snow and it is below 7 degree so what we talked about we talked about the sunlight it is very important and when we talk about the precipitation as i just said this precipitation if you even talk about rainfall this rainfall is very important that makes the vegetation different of different area okay then what we are doing is we are we want these forests forests are very important for us because they provide everything they uh, modify local climate uh, they control soil erosion they regulate the stream flow they support a variety of industries and also provide livelihood for the communities and they give us a very scenic and panoramic view so what we have done we have done a lot of bad things and just because uh, we are not aware that why what, what is going to happen in near future for our kids. So we are just destroying it. Right. So we'll talk about this uh, in just a bit. We talked about uh, ecosystem, I guess. So ecosystem, let me just uh, take you through this ecosystem, what you your book provides. 
so plants as i said they all and animal uh, the animal life they are all interrelated there there is a proper interdependent and interrelated system along with the physical environment so this is called the ecosystem according to the indian state of forest report which came in 2011 the forest cover in india is just 21.05 percent it's alarming it's alarming we are a population you know we are uh, we are the second populous country on this earth after china and by 2050 we are or say 2030 i guess we are going to uh, go ahead of china and, we, and to sustain all these we are just having 21% of the forest cover we need at least 40% and above forest cover but we do just have 21 percent now the important thing comes is the type of vegetation what is this type of vegetation there can be different type of vegetation depending upon the places depending upon the latitude depending upon the water depending upon the soil depending upon various characteristics which you just saw temperature etc so the type of vegetations which are identified in our country india is first of all tropical evergreen forest then we have tropical deciduous forest then we have tropical thorn forest and scrubs then we have montane forest and then we have mangrove forest these are five types of forest or five type of different vegetation that we find in our country what is this tropical evergreen forest first understand the name it is tropical that is it is found in the tropical region it is find, found in the tropical region evergreen means it will always be green that is if you go to that forest or you have a bird eye view you are in the helicopter helicopter or the airplane you see down and you will always find this kind of tree cover always there so it will be evergreen and forest mean the combination or the uh, there are so many trees at one place that is called forest so these forests, why they have evergreen, why they always are evergreen, so they are restricted to heavy rainfall areas where rainfall is quite high. Let me take you to this and then we'll discuss this. Okay. See, first of all, we need to understand that why it is evergreen because heavy rainfall areas are there. And these are the places of Western Ghats, island of Lakshadweep, Andaman Nicobar, upper parts of Assam and Tamil Nadu coast. So let me show you where we are talking about. So these tropical evergreen forests are found found here, Kerala, because of the southwest monsoon, we get lot of lot of rainfall here. Then in the month of uh, September, October, we get lot of rain here in the Tamil Nadu coast, that is Coromandel region. So we have this kind of forest, evergreen forest. Then here, Assam, this area which gets more than two hundred centimeter of forest uh, of, uh, water or rainfall this area is having tropical evergreen forest and of course the land the land we have seen the island island as i just said that because of the location because of water is there and there are mountains so always it is raining 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 that is why the lakshadweep and andaman nicobar islands they get lot of heavy rainfalls so 200 plus centimeter of rainfall that means very short dry season but most of the time it is raining there you get tropical evergreen forest the tree reach great height see the tree reaches great height up to 60 60 cent, 60 meter that is quite high so you have all sorts of things here 1.5 meter these are plants shrub layer then on 5 meter plants are there then you have young trees 20 meters then you have this canopy layer as i said you you are on the helicopter you see the canopy you can't see here even the sunlight can't come here then uh, we have at 40 meters then you have emergent layers these are maximum height 60 meter tree so the height goes up to 60 meter and above and these forests as you see it this forest these forests have everything they have trees they have they have everything they have trees they have shrubs they have creepers latain right so there is a multi-layer structure since the region is uh, warm and wet warm also and wet throughout the year so you have all sorts of variety here small one middle one and the bigger one the forests appear green all the all the year because 
even if uh, because it some places see i am showing you this what happens if this is a forest some trees because all these are trees so if these trees shed their leaf it doesn't matter because all other will look green may these 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 shed their leaf all other look green so they shed their leaves but still it will be seen always green all the year so what are the commercially important trees that is the trading purpose or which are important for us to use a human use and these forests having having ebony mahogany rosewood rubber and chinkona chinkona so ebony mahogany rosewood rubber and chinkona these are very important trees as far as their commerciality is considered what are the animals here in these region this region this region so what are the animals here what do we get here so we have elephants we have monkey lemur deer there are plenty of birds bats sloth scorpion snails these are also found here so let me tell you again about this uh, tropical evergreen forest so these this is the region of tropical evergreen forest this is a small region at the tamil nadu coast this is the region where we get a quite a quite a rainfall and this region of course the northeastern this region so we have tropical evergreen forest here now coming to the tropical deciduous forest so what is the place we get tropical I'll, i'll just come to that so this tropical deciduous forest if you see all these region these are tropical deciduous forest light green so these are tropical deciduous because most of the indian region has the tropical deciduous forest so let me just take you through and i'll just explain it to you so they they are called a monsoon forest please understand tropical deciduous forest are also known as monsoon forest and they are spread over a long region these region they are getting rainfall from monsoon that is why they are monsoon forest and how much they get around 200 to 70 cm of rainfall annually now the more the most important thing of this deciduous deciduous means shedding the leaf shedding it so trees of these forests they shed their leaf they leave their leaves for about 6 to 8 weeks when it is quite high dry summer so 6 to 8 weeks they shed their leaf and these forests are again divided means if you see that i this this tropical deciduous forest is divided into again two two parts and this is moist and this is dry so moist moist deciduous forest and dry deciduous forest what is this moist deciduous forest the rainfall if it is between so see this tdf that is tropical deciduous forest has rainfall from 200 to 70 200 to 70 so when we have 200 to 100 this partition is known as the moist deciduous forest then from 100 to 70 this is known as the dry deciduous forest so what is this uh, moist deciduous moist means they have some humidity or water what about the tropical deciduous forest and this is between 200 to 70 cm of rain so the forest where we have this region this region this region is a uh, getting rain from 70 cm to 200 cm so most important thing is they shed their leaf about 6 to 8 months when there is a dry summer now we can always uh, divide them because the regions are different so we can divide in into two parts again that is this can be divided into 200 to 100 and then 100 to 70 so 200 to 100 we call them as a different name and the other one we call it as a different name so first we call them as deciduous forest or more moist deciduous why it is moist because the water there the wind there will have lot of moisture in them so this are again the area because from 200 to 100 it's a quite a rain that is the water content is quite good and it is present uh, mostly in the eastern part of the country that is this the this is the eastern part of the country then we have another uh, eastern part these northern eastern states if you see uh, 
green ones not green ones then uh, we have the because these this dark green area is not that one right we have already seen that this dark green area is tropical evergreen forest but we are talking about tropical deciduous forest and this is basically because of the because of the rain and which is intermediary not that much not not very scare scarce so we have northern eastern state and uh, the foothills of himalayas jharkhand west odisha chatisgarh and the, on the eastern slopes of the western ghat so this is western ghat so this is west this is east so eastern part eastern means this part of the western ghat and teak is the most dominant species of this forest and there are there are trees which are commercially very important like bamboo sol shisham sandalwood khair pusum arjun and mulberry apart from this the second part we can divide it into 100 to 70 and this is called as dry deciduous so rainfall between 100 and 70 it is dry de uh, deciduous and this present in the rainier parts of the peninsula plateau because peninsula plateau there are certain parts which are quite uh, rain getting and the plains of bihar and uttar pradesh here the teak sal people and neem grow these are the trees and most of the area have been already cleared for cultivation and for grazing and common animals in this region we found or we generally find is lion tiger pig deer elephant and there are huge varieties of birds also lizards also snakes and tortoises so these are the two parts now coming to the tropical thorn and forest scrubs so let me show you a picture first so there are certain things which need to be observed first of all these are the trees and these are the you can say cactus shrub etc and they are quite a, a distance means they are not very they are not quite dense because the region is uh, mostly balui like uh, sand is there water is less so the leaves are very very small very very small or either you can say these leaves are uh, thorns also and the roots of these uh, whatever is growing here they are quite long because they these roots are always in search of water so they move in all the direction so this is these are the peculiarities of tropical thorn forest and scrubs and again let me show you the the area where we we are talking about so these are the tropical thorn forest this area as we know that the water is scarce or the monsoon doesn't fall here that much as it falls in this region then we have this area why this area because we have a western ghat and when monsoon comes most of the rain occurs here so this is a vrishti chaya pradesh or you can say a mountain is there and this is the other side of the mountain so this region gets less rain so we will find here tropical thorn forest so these uh, are found in the region which are less than see 70 cm and less rainfall the natural vegetation consist of what as i just suggested these are thorny trees bushes acacias palms uh, euphorbias and cacti that is a species of cactus all these cactus comes under cacti and as i said these are quite scattered and they have long roots the roots are quite long and the distance is also quite high and uh, the roots penetrating deep into the soil they are quite deep why they because they want water they want the soil needs uh, the tree the trees need moisture or water from the soil and the stems are quite uh, succulent to conserve water and leaves are mostly thick very thick and small thick and small because you know there is a scorching heat of sun and they can't afford these trees can't afford to lose water because of uh, evaporation so this thick and small leaves are just because they want to minimize the evaporation and common animals that we find here are rats mice rabbits fox wolf tiger lion wild ass horses and camels now mountain forest these are just uh, remember the name mountain so let us see first that which region we are talking about then we'll go to the detail of this mountain forest okay this is the region we are talking about so these are the mountain forest and these mountain forest are in the mountain so this this uh, you can say is sparkling green here 
here, here. These are the region, you know. More, because these uh, hills or you can say the mountains are quite high. So, we do not get it here. They, they, there are mountains here, Aravali, Vidya and all these mountains are there. But they are not uh, as high as what we find here. So, what are the peculiarities here? See, mountain forests, they have a succession of natural vegetation belts in the same order as we see from tropical to tundra. So, what is this succession? Succession means depending upon the height, I am just going up, you know, moving up the altitude. So, this is what succession means. So, if you see here, these are the mountain, fo mountain forest. So, we get different type of vegetation here. When we go up, means uh, go up the altitude, we get different one and then different one like this. So, we, when we move up, the vegetation changes. If you see from 1000 to 2000 meters, uh, in this region or in this height region, wet temperate type of forest which contains evergreen broad leaf trees like the oaks and chestnut. These are predominant. When we go up, that is 1500 to 3000, what do we get? Now we have increased the height. We have gone up. In this temperate forest, we have coniferous trees like pine, deodar, silver fir, spruce and kedar or sedar sometimes we say. We go to higher elevation, we get, because in the mountain also we find the, you know, plain region. So these are called, these are called grasslands grasslands and if we move further that is 3600 plus if you move further up above mean sea level alpine trees alpine trees which have silver for uh, like uh, the names can be junipers pines birches these are found and if you go to snow line because there is a lot of snow so the trees most of the trees cannot uh, they cannot grow because always they are snow covered so there we find shrubs and scrubs and they merge into the alpine grasslands, uh, which are used uh, extremely useful for the Gujars and Bakrawal type of nomadic tribes. They use it for gra grazing their cattle. And at the higher altitudes, as I just said, that mosses and lichens, these are uh, part of tundra vegetation. And what are the common animals here? Kashmir uh, stag, Kashmiri mahamrig, spotted deer, wild sheep, jackrabbit, Tibetan antelope, yak. Snow leopard, squirrels, shaggy horn, uh, wild ibex, bear and rare red panda, sheep and goats. And they are with thick hair. The sheep, sheep and goat are the animals we find in the plain region, right? Not very cold region, they will have less hair. But even if you go up and you see dogs, they have a lot of thick hair. So this, this is just because to cover them from the extreme uh, you can say winter winter conditions. Now, mangrove forest. What is this mangrove forest? As the name suggests, this uh, forest is based on mangrove. So, what is this mangrove? These are the name of the trees. And that is why when we have number of trees like this, we have mangrove forest. So, if you see this tree, the roots of this tree, they are inside water. So, we have soil here, which is bought by the tides. And we have the red or balu or sand here. So both of the things combined, these tree, they grow here. And if they are not many trees, then we call them as mangrove forest. So generally we find them in the coastal area, sea coastal area. So this is the region. This is the mangrove forest region. This is the mangrove, mangrove, mangrove. These are the prominent. We find mangrove everywhere, you know, whenever we have a coastal region. But we need to have a forest that is a variety of uh, you can say vegetation at a place so these are the mainly three regions or multiple regions where mangrove forests are there so these forests are found in the area of coast as i just suggested influenced by the tides where what what is going to come mud and silt mud and silt on this because you know for tree it cannot grow entirely in the water it needs some some sort of mud and slit to grow up and dense mangroves these are the common varieties with roots of the plants submerged underwater. So if you see, these roots are submerged underwater, and these are dead, these are the deltas of uh, Ganga, Mahanadi, Krishna, Godavari, Kaveri. You find. So here, this is uh, you know Godav, this Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri. So they have delta here. So most of the trees are or these uh, mangrove forests are found here. If you go to a very important uh, part, which is Ganga Brahmaputra Delta, there are Sundari trees. Sundari, that is why it is called as Sundarban. Sundari trees are found. 
which provide durable hard timber. So palm, coconut, kiora, uh, agar, they grow in some part of the these delta region. And you find Royal Bengal tiger here, this place. Royal Bengal tiger. And this is the famous animal. Also, along with you get turtles, uh, crocodiles, ghadiyals, and snakes. These are found is in these forests. And these ghadiyals, these are the only uh, you can say species of crocodiles that you find in India. You will not find it any other place. So let me just quickly go through all the vegetation we have. See, these are the, the different vegetation on different altitude, different temperature, different uh, climate, and uh, you know different uh, environmental condition different trees are being uh, being uh, seen and uh, india is have, having a very rich variety of uh, different type of vegetation as we have already discussed and these are the tropical evergreen these are the type of vegetation so tropical evergreen forest let me again go through it so this is the region these are the region dark green these region this region this region so these are the tropical evergreen forests like the rainfall is more than 200 centimeter plus. Then we have tropical deciduous forest, mostly the you can say the monsoon forest, and they shed their leaf six to eight weeks in dry summer. Then we have mountain forest, these forests, these are the mountain forest where the height or the you can say forest change with the height depending upon whether it is 100 to 200 or about 3600 meter. Then we have mangrove, mangrove forests and these mangrove forests are generally because of the tides and the sand and silt and these trees mostly the, the roots are inside the water and these are the main places mostly find in the coastal area. Then tropical thorn forest these are the area which are which is which are uh, scarce in water they have scarcity of monsoon also. So these are the places where you will find tropical thorn forest the trees or the thorns or the scrubs will be at a distance their roots will be quite inside. Uh, they are just always searching for for uh, water or moisture and the, their tree their the tree uh, leaves are very small and very very thick in order to just uh, avoid the evaporation that the sun will cause them next thing comes is wildlife now wildlife is very important because you know there is a proper ecosystem and that ecosystem has flora and fauna. So flora are plants and uh, all those species like trees, etc. And then we have wildlife, that is the animal part. So India has about 2,000 species of birds, which constitute 13% of world total. And there are 2,546 type of fish, fish, which accounts for nearly 12% of the world stock, 12%. And it, we also have five to five and five and eight percent of amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. So elephants are found in the hot, wet uh, forest of Assam, and we have Karnataka and Kerala. Then one horned uh, rhinoceros, they live in swampy and marshy land of Assam area, and then West Bengal here. Then ran of Kutch, this area, this area is habitat of wild ass and camels these are found in thar desert then indian bison nilgai that is blue bull and chausinga four horned antelope gazelle there are different uh, species of deer also are found in various parts of india now india is the only country where you get tigers plus lions together and the gir forest is the natural habitat of lion while the tigers are found in the forest of Madhya Pradesh. And the Sundarbans of West Bengal and Himalayan region, we find them. These uh, We already talked about Royal Bengal tiger. The Himalayas harbor a hardy range of animals, this, this region. Uh, the survival is quite extreme because of the extreme cold. So Ladakh here, this region, uh, freezing high altitudes, these are home to yak. And yak are shaggy horned wild ox. And they may weigh up to 1 ton, that is 100 kgs, 100 kilos. The Tibetan antelope, the bharal, that is uh, blue sheep, wild sheep. And kiang, Tibetan wild ass, the ibex, bear, snow leopard. And very rare sometimes we find red panda also in these certain parts. In the rivers, lakes and coastal areas, we find this, these regions, these regions and these regions. 
we find a uh, turtle crocodiles and ghadiyas also birds when we talk about birds we have peacock, peacocks uh, pheasants ducks parakeets cranes pigeons and these are also found in various forests and wetlands of the country so wildlife protection act was implemented in uh, 1972 why because we are not so much doing for the wildlife protection so there has to be an act and this is uh, this came into being in 1972 and as i said the gir forest is the uh, the last remaining habitat of asiatic lion you can understand if the lions are not there the food chain will not complete and there will be unbalanced uh, ecosystem and you know what will be the outcome of that and there are certain medicinal plants so there are around 2000 plants which are described in ayurveda and 500 we use uh, you know regularly so the world conservation union red list it has named 352 medicinal plants and 52 which are critically threatened and 49 are already endangered so what plants we generally use just to give you an idea that sarpagandha for blood pressure jamun for the, the it has very digestive good digestive property and controlling diabetes arjun and this fresh juice of leaves it can cure the uh, ear ache kaan kaan ke dikkate isko theek karta hai it is also used to regulate the blood pressure babul for eye sores like like styes and the gum is used as a, as a tonic and neem neem is a good antibiotic and, and having antibacterial properties tulsi plant for cough and cold and kachanar for asthma ulcers and uh, of course the digestive problems so these are the you know i'm just saying that these plants are so important for us for our existence also they have all the medicinal values but still we are eager to cut them so these are the places of the wildlife these are the, the these are the normal uh, wildlife uh, find if found in india major major things which public know and we go to see them these are the elephant and indian great mongoose we have uh, all indian montanic uh, rivers uh, this deer then peacock tortoise ghariyas lion tiger leopard everything we have you know every variety we have so let me just uh, take you to the wildlife sanctuary this all red one red ones these are wildlife sanctuaries and these uh, stars are bird sanctuaries and then we have this triangle blue triangle these are national parks so these are national parks so government is doing a lot to you know to save the ecosystem save the flora and fauna that is why we have wildlife bird and century and also national park so as i just said we need to conserve the flora and fauna and this is not for anyone else it is for us for for our existence for our kids uh, who are who are going to be you know for next 50 years the excessive exploitation or misuse of the plants and animals resources by us that is human beings it has disturbed the ecosystem about 1300 plants species they are endangered 20 species are already extinct and some animals they are already endangered or at the verge of being extinct so what are the cause of these threats why, why it is happening because of a greediness hunting of greedy by her greedy hunters and uh, for commercial purposes and pollution of course the pollution due to chemical and industrial waste and the acid deposits nobody is caring for that you know when you produce when you produce something there are certain consumers so when you produce pollution they are consumers that is human beings and introduction of some alien species when something comes which are not that genetically strong then this can happen and we are cutting forest recklessly ruthlessly cutting forest why because we we need to feed the population cultivation has to be done and we are destroying the actual habitation of the wildlife and also cutting the trees so government have taken step it is not that uh, everyone has a blind eye so they are protecting flora and fauna uh, 14 biosphere reserves have been set up in the country in order to protect the flora and fauna and financial and technical assistance means the government is providing financial money also and technical assistance is also provided uh, to many botanical gardens by the government since 1992 because it has been experienced long back that this is a serious issue project tiger project rhino project great indian uh, the bastard and many other eco development projects have been introduced and 89 national parks for 89 national parks 490 wildlife sanctuaries and zoological gardens they 
they are being set up to take care of the national heritage, which is everyone's duty. And the Sundarbans in the Western Bengal, Nanda Devi in Uttarakhand, Gulf of Mannar in Tamil Nadu, and the Nilgiris in Southern India part, Kerala, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. This have been included in the World Network of Biosphere Reserves. So these are in the world. See, at world level, they are uh, in the network of biosphere reserves. So these are the list of uh, 14, 14 bio reserves in India. So we have Sundarbans, uh, Simli Pal, uh, Gulf of Mannar, and then we have uh, the Hang Dibang Nilgiris in South India, Dibru Saikova here. Then we have Nanda Devi here. Then we have Agastya Malai, Kerala and uh, Tamil Nadu. Then we have Nokrek here. Then we have Kanchenjunga, this Kanchenjunga. And then we have Great Nicobar, this place. Then we have Pachmadi here. Then we have Manas in Assam. This is Manas, you can see also. Then we have, this is um, Simli Pal. This is Tashigam. This is uh, Achnakmar Amarkantak. So all these things are very important for us to understand that there are certain birds which are coming from from you know a distance because they find a good place in India as the climate also suits them for a certain time and they lay their egg they do the reproduction and they find it better here and they also are part of the natural ecosystems or biodiversity we have. So what do we know by this chapter? There are certain things which are given in the blocks that is the virgin vegetation. What is the virgin vegetation? Uh, these are purely Indian, uh, known as endemic or indigenous species, native, desi, deshaj. But those who have come from outside India, they are known as exotic plants. And according to the Indian State of uh, Forest Report 2011, the forest cover in India is 21.05% only. And this is really alarming. Wildlife Protection Act, we have already seen, was implemented in 1972 in India. And the Gir forest is the last remaining habitat of the Asiatic lion.